What's up, everyone? Thank you for jumping in here. This will be my Ichimoku Cloud crash course. I'll try to do it reasonably quickly because we do have quite a lot of material to get through, but if you feel rushed at any point, remember well, I, I will provide all of the slides used for this um, at the bottom uh, in the description box so you can follow at your own pace. And at the same time, I'll give you suggestions on the slides you should sort of keep tabbed and keep open for you to refer to as we go through this. So obviously the disclaimer, this is not financial advice. You can lose all your money trading. I'm not a licensed professional. Professional, do speak to one if you want that type of advice, right? Now setting up the Ichimoku, for those who want to follow this kind of thing live, I'll just do this on TradingView now. So you open your trading platform. I use TradingView. On the search bar, you're going to type in Ichi, and it should come out as one of the built-ins. You've got a lot of options here. I have, I've had no problems using this one. Add it to your favorites, open it up, and it should look something like this. Now, as I mentioned here, there are adjusted settings for crypto, 10, 30, 60, 30, to reflect the fact that it's a 24-7 market. Um, a lot of traders, myself included, double these settings to get more conservative signals. So if you go to inputs, if you click on the cog, go to inputs, and you want to do the doubled settings, you go to 20, 60, 120, and don't double the displacement. That just stays at 30, okay? And then I also recommend, just for aesthetic purposes, for style, just crank these up at least one notch because it makes everything a bit easier to see in my experience. Inputs, then you can save those as your default, okay, and there you go, you're set up. Jumping back into this giving my pointer back so this doesn't keep coming up. Paying my dues, thank you to Carpe Noctum for your YouTube, Twitter, and everything else. Um, ledger status for all your help and helping me in DMs when I ask you really stupid questions. And also the blockchain at Berkeley course, which is taught, the, the Ichimoku five-part course is taught by Carpe Noctum himself. Um, and a lot of the strategies I talk about here have are covered in more detail with very good examples and more strategies than the ones I cover in this video by Carpe Noctum himself in this course. And the link to that is right here, okay? So what am I looking at? You've set up the Ichimoku. This is what you, you're faced with, something which looks like this. And your first thought is, oh my God, I've made a big mistake. This is, looks far too complicated. Please take me back to trend lines. Now, these are the labels um, on the lines. At this point in the video, I'd usually tell you how each one is calculated, what it means, blah, 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 but we will have a lot of time to go over that, and about how they're calculated, I'm sure not that many people care, okay? So this is one of the tabs. Um, this is one of the uh, slides I would recommend you keep open as we go through this presentation. So as with any TA tool, which isn't sort of an oscillator or whatever else, um, this one helps you find areas of support and resistance without a huge amount of effort. And the most useful components for finding support and resistance I've found to be the Kumo Cloud itself uh, and the Kijin Sen. The Tenkin Sen, of course, can be used, but we'll be spending a lot of time mainly on these two. And as I mentioned here, the Ichimoku indicator can be integrated very well with trend lines, patterns, horizontal levels, your Fibonacci's, you know, whatever else you may want. So it is quite a cool tool to add to your arsenal, which isn't, which won't interfere with it too much. So some examples of the Kumo cloud acting as support can be found on the Bitcoin daily chart. So as you can see, I do hope this stops coming up. Is there some sources? Okay. Let's go here. Nope. All right. Whatever. Forget it. Um, as you can see with the first arrow, I'm just, well, all three of these arrows point out Bitcoin corrections. Um, and so with the first one, we bounced at, towards the end of the, the bottom of the Kumo cloud. Uh, with the second one, we found support at the sort of floor of the cloud itself, the horizontal floor. And with the most recent one, I think this is the China FUD, um, this first layer or top support top layer of support for Kumo Cloud provided us with our bounce area. So quite consistent um, that the Kumo Cloud acts as support for Bitcoin during correctional periods. So Kumo Cloud was one, and the other important one is the Kijin Sen. Uh, we will be spending a lot of time with the Kijin, so don't feel like this is it. And just to give you an example, this is the Amisgo Bitcoin 4-hour chart. 
In case you're wondering why it looks so strange, all of this, it's because I've disabled the other lines, so you just have the Keygen and the sort of cloud outline. So as you can see here, we get listed, price, after this huge uptrend, we test the Keygen, we bounce, really big move here, and then we retrace, again, test the Keygen, we're all good for an uptrend, we bounce again, test the Keygen, move up, move sideways, which way we're going to break, we test the Keygen, we decide to break up, um, and now this is the first red flag, a sort of big dump under the Keygen, even though we recovered fairly quickly. And then at this point, uh, which is now what we know is the top of OMG, you see these long periods in this red box of price disrespecting the Keygen, and it never really recovered since then. You can see we have a dead cat bounce here above it, dump, more disrespect of the Keygen support, another test of the Keygen's resistance, does, it's a bit of a fake out, get rejected, and since then OMG has been in a vicious downtrend, and it's nowhere near this price that's demonstrated here. So that's just giving you an example of the Keygen acting as support, and we will cover this topic as a separate trading strategy, as we'll see shortly. And again, I mentioned support and resistance. Kumo Cloud is good for it. We just saw the Keygen uh, acting as resistance as well, but one of the main components of the Ichi system is how clearly the Kumo cloud um, acts as resistance across all sort of these time frames and whatever else. So as you can see here, we had a big downtrend and we found a floor around this level um, and we bounced and tested the resistance of the cloud here. Violent rejection, the downtrend continues um, and we go back up. This isn't really a strict test of the cloud, but a similar zone, no success. We keep going. And here you can see a wick. We tried to test the Kumo cloud again, rejected. Tried another test, rejected. We formed this sort of double bottom, W reversal, whatever it is. We try the cloud again, and we don't get a single candle close all this time within the cloud. We get rejected, and this is uh, where we're at now. So, you know, you might not have a fun time going up to test cloud resistance, given how bad these were. But hopefully this gives an idea of how useful the Ichimoku system can be in, in, in outlining areas of resistance. So these are the trading strategies we're going to go over today. Um, this list is not exhaustive. If you want a more exhaustive one, pay for the blockchain at Berkeley course taught by Carpe Noctum. That is exhaustive with a lot of detail, more advanced, a lot more advanced stuff, and lots more examples. For now, we'll be going over, of course, the TK Cross textbook, Kumo breakouts, Kumo edge to edge trades, Keygen bounces, Keygen crosses. You know, I promised we'd be spending a lot of time on the Keygen, Kumo twists, and Ichimoku um, acting as an oscillator. So, this is another slide that I'd recommend for you to keep open separately as we go through this video. It'll just make a lot more sense as we go through. Um, what I'm trying to get across here is a lot of these signals vary in strength and your reaction to them should vary based on where sort of where they happen in relation to the cloud, right? So let's say you have a bullish TK cross, okay? You don't even need to know what that means. Let's say you have a bullish TK cross. Now, if that happens above the cloud and price above the cloud is bullish, as we'll go over, then that's two bullish signals stacked together, two really strong bullish signals stacked together. So you have a bullish TK cross, obviously bullish, and then you have price above the cloud, obviously bullish. And those stack together to give a really strong sell signal. At the same time, you might have the same signal, a bullish TK cross, but that TK cross takes place while price is, or you know, uh, under the Kumo cloud, you know, you have the same signal, bullish TK cross, but price is under the cloud. All this means is this isn't obviously a strong buy signal like the one before. All this indicates is, hey, maybe we have a reversal here. Maybe it's time to close our shorts, right? So the same signal can mean very different things based on what the cloud is doing and where price is at. So that's something for you to bear in mind and something we'll cover in more detail. Now, obviously, everyone loves asking about time frames, or I'll keep this fairly brief. Normal rules apply. Higher time frames will give you more reliable signals and less noise, as you'll see. But that doesn't mean the Ichimoku 
system can't be used on lower time frames, and I've had a lot of success using it in lower time frames, as of many others. 30 minutes, one hour, four hour daily are the ones I use, and are the ones that are quite popular. Um, and again, just a little tip here, if you're trying to use the daily, for example, on a coin which doesn't have a lot of history, you might have a rough time doing it. So you can either, to remedy that, um, use a lower time frame, like the four hours should be fine, or reduce the settings uh, to single cloud as opposed to double. So, you know, go to 10, 30, 60, 30, instead of the 20, 60, 120, 30. Yeah, okay. So the first thing we'll go over is the TK cross. This is one of the most textbook Ichimoku things that exists. And the TK cross is simply when the Tenkan Sen, the conversion line, crosses above or below the Kijin Sen, right? And so whether that's bullish or bearish depends on which way it crosses, obviously. So when the blue line crosses from below to above the cherry line, it's a bullish cross. So if the Tenkin is below the Kijin and it breaks up above it, that's bullish. And then obviously the opposite of tr is true. So if, if your Tenkin is above the Kijin and then it crosses below it, that's a bearish cross. And this will, this will make more sense. Look at it where it is in relation to the Kuma cloud. Some examples. So as you can see here, this is with um, this is another Bitcoin daily chart. So tank, the most simple piece of advice I can give you for those who get confused by the lines is follow the blue. Okay, just follow the blue and let, it'll make a lot more sense. So the blue is a tankin. Tankin is up and again. Tankin is above the Kijin, and we move from above to below. Okay, from above to below. This is a bearish TK cross and the cloud is telling you to sell. Now then you see we flatline and we the Tenkin moves from below to above the Kijin Sen. So again, red, bearish TK cross. Green, bullish TK cross. We were below, we move above and we catch this whole move here. And then here for a very short time, the cloud is catching up with this and it's saying, hey, you should sell So Tenkin moves from above to below the Kijun, but then Cloud quickly picks up on this and says, just a prank, bro, you should buy. And so you have a bearish cross above, below, following the blue, above, below, and then from below to above, bullish cross. And actually, if you pay attention to this, this is quite a recent chart. Um, this is on the daily. If you followed this signal, the last TK cross we had on the daily, you would have bought Bitcoin at about 3,800, 4,000, and we're currently around here, um, just to give you an idea. And as you'll, fig as you'll figure out when we go through the lessons, this is also a cross above the cloud, which is an extra bullish signal. So this is a no-brain bullish signal with a spike in volume. If you went long here, you know, good job. <laughs> So some more examples of these crosses. I want this to be really visual and really get into your head so you're not lost in the lines. This is Ethereum Bitcoin daily. Follow the blue. Okay, blue is below the cherry, tanking below the Kijun, and we go from below to above. Okay, that's a bullish cross from below to above. The, the, the cloud is telling you to buy. You buy, you know, around here, or you might wait until we break out of the cloud, which is fine, you buy here, and all this way, we don't have a recross. Pretty powerful stuff, right? And this is on the daily time frame, so it's not going to make a bunch of noise. You catch this move super early, and if you're super, if you're conservative and want to wait for the cloud break, you sort of buy here, and you catch all this move up based on the cloud. And then cloud says, "Hey, this is we, we might be in some trouble here." So again, Tenkin is above the Kijun, and we move the blue is above and we move from above to below this is bearish okay from above to below is a bearish tk cross and we haven't recrossed since then and you see sort of you know you would have sold around here maybe we, when we dumped out of the cloud or here um and this would have saved you all of this move down daily time frame low noise um probably slightly you know the signals are more conservative and you'll get them a bit later than the sort of four hour or something else but it won't fake you out for the most part. So hopefully TK crosses are clear. And the next bit we're going to cover our Kumo breakouts. Um, the bit I said at the beginning will start to make more sense now. So in simple terms, Kumo breakout is, well, 
Generally, a Kumo breakout is when price breaks above or below the cloud, and when price breaks up through the top of the Kumo cloud, it's bullish. So price above cloud is bullish. Price below cloud is bearish. Fairly straightforward. So now the first part of the video really makes sense. When you get a bullish TK cross above the cloud, you're combining the bullish TK cross as a bull sign and this as a bull sign, which, you know, two bull signals stacked together, you're you'll you're gonna want to go long now when price breaks below uh the last line of the kuma cloud this is bearish so if you have a tk cross below the cloud you have a bullish indicator and but you also have a price is in a bearish position so it's a much weaker signal even though both are bullish tk crosses that should make a lot more sense now um and when price is within the kuma cloud this usually means a no trade zone with the exception of an edge to edge and this is one of the things we'll be covering Okay, if price is within the cloud, it just means we're ranging. So again, visual examples, the Bitcoin dollar four hour chart, ignore the sort of fundamentals that led to this or whatever, this is just for demonstrative purposes. Um, so cloud acted as support here. We went up, cloud acted as resistance. So it's quite a good example because it pieces a lot of the stuff we learned together. So look, dumps through first layer of cloud support, bounces at the bottom, up, test resistance rejected, and now it's this is the Kumo cloud support. And so price went from above the cloud, inside the cloud, and then below. So this is when price broke below the Kumo cloud, which is bearish, and you can see how far down we went. Even though this was the China foot from a technical perspective, um, I'm just demonstrating the fact that breaking down below the Kumo cloud is bearish. Um, and then you have the same thing. Um, we went up, tested cloud resistance, rejected cloud support, back up to cloud resistance, and we broke out. So again, very bullish when price moves above cloud, and we caught this whole move, and you know the rest is history. Hopefully, the Kumo breakout makes sense, and you must you you understand Kumo breakouts and TK crosses, um, and then. The trading strategy which put, puts those together quite well is the Kumo edge-to-edge -edge trade. Um, so generally what this is, is when price breaks into the cloud and you have candle closes within the cloud, either way, right? So it could be, it could have been above cloud and broken down into the cloud, or it could have been below cloud and broken up into the cloud. It doesn't matter if you have candle closes inside the cloud after one of those events, the target of the trade, or a good target for a trade, is the opposite edge of that same cloud. Don't worry, the picture will make a lot more sense. Um, and I suggest you use other elements of the Ichimoku cloud system and other tools to see if the move is supported. It's not like a 100% TK cross strength style thing. This is just something that tends to work quite a lot. And again, this is the simple version. If price enters the cloud and stays there, which means you have candle closes within it, there's a reasonable chance that price reaches the opposite end, or at least that should be your target for a trade. So on the Dash Bitcoin 4-hour chart, we have a nice edge-to-edge. -edge. So going through it here, um, you see that the Tenkin is above the Kijin, so this is a, we probably crossed, we had a bullish TK cross, and here we go, and the Tenkin drops below the Kijin, the black arrow is a bearish TK cross, Tank in above, moves to below, and we enter the cloud here. So we're, in, we're above the cloud, we have a bearish TK cross, bull sign one, and we've gone from being above the cloud, and we've just entered it. So this is the perfect candidate for an edge to edge, where candle closes within the cloud, and the target becomes the other side, or the opposite side of the cloud. And this is especially true when the Kumo is flat. I've just noticed that flat Kumos act as magnets, and this is something that's taught quite commonly. So your signals for this edge to edge, bearish TK cross, price entering the cloud, and obviously moving down to the magnet flat Kumo would be a bearish move because price would keep going down. Bearish, bearish, target, edge to edge worked out perfectly, bounced, you know, you see these wigs are perfect on the Kumo support, price bounced, closed here and up we went. So that's one good example uh, of an edge-to-edge -edge trade. And just to give another example, this is on the ARDR Bitcoin 4-hour edge-to-edge. -edge. And this is the opposite case. So this one is slightly hard to see, but you see um, following, follow the blue, follow the Tenkin. Bullish, we're above. 
bearish we're below here and then bullish we cross back up here so bullish see, bullish cross we enter the cloud we have candle closes within the cloud and then you have a flat kumo magnet whatever here bullish bias entering the cloud target target makes sense obviously because we're going up and up we did and this was a great you know it wasn't just edge to edge we went a lot higher but as you can see it's really helpful when an edge to edge trade which is cloud um, candles closing within the cloud is also supported by the way the Tenkin and Kijun are crossed so if you're entering the cloud from the bottom and you want to go up you want a bullish TK cross the price to go up and the opposite is true if you're above the cloud and you're entering and your target is the bottom you want a bearish TK cross to help you push the price down Hopefully that lesson or that strategy makes sense. The next one we're going to cover, and we're going to spend a lot of time with the Keijin, as I said, is the Keijin bounce. And defined, a Keijin bounce is when price retraces to the Keijin Sen and successfully uses it as a support level. Right? So the best way to think about it is sort of the equivalent of drawing either a horizontal level, a fib retracement level, um, a trend line or whatever, and price going down, testing the trend line, and then bouncing off it. This is the sort of Ichimoku equivalent of... Um, testing the support successfully. Hence why one of the strategies that Carpe Noctum goes on about is placing buys at the Kijun, which is, the, again, the Ichi equivalent of buying support. So in simple terms, the Kijun bounce is when price tests and bounces off the cherry line. Um, hopefully I shouldn't have to use this stuff for you now, but, <laughs> you know, whatever, it helps. Um, this suggests that the support level is held and the trend is likely to continue. You know, just like with your normal TA, um, if you have a support trend line and price goes down and tests it, it's usually a good bet that it's going to bounce and continue the trend that it's in. So, some examples of Keijin bounces on the Bitcoin uh, dollar four hour chart. Just like the Amis Go chart, I've only kept the Keijin here. So look, um, we have a big move up, retrace, Keijin holds, move up, retrace, Keijin holds, up, Keijin holds, Keijin holds, huge move up. Similar to OMG, red flag, break the Keijin, which we, we've held for this whole move up. So, you know, this is a bit worrying. We go up again, we test the Keijin, and we have a major rejection. Right? So, lots of candle closes below. We go up, and then the Keijin fails to hold again. Right? So, from a technical perspective, again, this is the China foot. You could have been looking at this stuff and saying, hey, we're starting to break this really resilient support that's been doing us good from here. Maybe I should short or get out. And as you can see, what happened was once this streak, and similar to OMG chart, as I said, once this streak of breaking the Keijin line becomes frequent, it's usually a sign to get the fuck out. Break, uh, kind of okay, break again with a lot of closes, uh, not good news. And we fail the next test. Here you think, okay, this is bad. And it was. It was. <clears throat> so hopefully Keijin bounce makes sense. Using the Keijin again in a very similar way is the Keijin cross. So in simple terms, when well, the general description, when the price crosses above or below the Keijin, that's what a Keijin cross is. And it's obviously bullish or bearish depending on which way it crosses, much like the TK cross. So when price crosses from below to above the Keijin, it's bullish. When price crosses from above to below the Keijin, it's bearish. That much should be obvious. Here's the Litecoin Bitcoin daily chart with some Keijin crosses. Um, so as you can see here, price was below the Keijin and we moved up above it, bullish, and we actually have a Keijin bounce as well. This is very bullish stuff. As you can see, we had a big uptrend and then we broke the Keijin here, which isn't good. So we had this period of retracement down here. And then again, we broke up above the Keijin and had a Keijin bounce, which is bullish. Right? So these are two bullish things, price going from below to above the Keijin, and then a, six, uh, I suppose, a reasonably successful Keijin bounce, and that's reflected in the uptrend. Then we had a double top reversal pattern here. We break the Keijin here, so it's bearish, price going from above to below the Keijin, we have this whole thing, um, then we do break above it, but, you know, not convincingly, and then 
So price was below, went above. That's bullish, but it couldn't hold. And we went from above to below again, and we're here now. So again, Kijin bounce and Kijin cross are fairly similar and should usually be used in conjunction with one another. So for moves like this, where we have from below to above and a Kijin bounce, that's usually uh, quite bullish. But as you can see, um, it, the same happened here, from below to above with a bounce bullish. But make sure you don't get faked out, you know, from below to above no bounce. So, you know, if you put your buys here, you, you, you'd be wrecked. Um, so use this carefully, but as you can see, it's quite powerful. Another uh, technique that's, or strategy I'd like to go over, and this one is a bit briefer and hopefully a bit simpler, is the kum Akumo twists or Senku Span crosses. Um, and there are a lot of ways these are used. And I, what, I looked at a link before this video where there was like, you know, six different signals you can get from them. And I'm, I'm sure they're all valid, but there is a simpler way I like to use them. Um, and obviously these twists, and this is basically the simple way of explaining what a Senku span cross is, is when a future, you know, it's basically what color is the future cloud. Okay, that's that's the easiest way. Um, and the way you should use it to trade is that the future Kumo, the future cloud, should reflect the position you're taking. So if you want to buy, the future cloud should be green. And if you want to sell, the future cloud should be red. It's fairly simple, hopefully. Um, here's an example on Litecoin. So here, let's say you want, you're want you wanting to buy and you're following the blue, following the Kijun, bearish cross, we're up, and then this is a bullish cross. And you're thinking, hey, we're above cloud and we just had a bullish cross, um, is this a good opportunity to long? And then you look at the future cloud, and apart from this little bit, it's green, and it supports your idea to long, and you catch this nice move up. And on the same Litecoin chart, 4-hour, um, Tenkin is above the Kijun, we break below, bearish TK cross, and we start moving out of the cloud, and you're wondering, hey, I, I should probably sell here, right? And then you look at the future cloud, um, maybe around here, and it's, well, probably earlier, but anyway, you look at Future Cloud, and at what it would have turned bearish, and you think, yeah, okay, so the confirmation of TK cross bearish, as in when, you know, we moved from above to below, price dropping out of the cloud, very bearish, Future Cloud bearish, I'm getting the fuck out around here or something, and you save yourself a big move down. Now I'm going to cover Ichimoku as an oscillator, so an oscillator is something to... Well, so it broadly defined, it's a tool to measure whether, well, to measure momentum and to measure whether something is overbought and or oversold. Um, well, overbought or oversold. Um, now, the way this works on Ichimoku is that the greater the disparity between the Kijin and the Tenkin, the more overbought or oversold the price is, depending on the trend. This is also known as TK disequilibrium, and then obviously the correction leads to the two lines coming close together and bringing them to equilibrium. Uh, my favorite simple term bit, if the gap between the cherry line and the blue line becomes big, it suggests price will need to correct. And a great example of this is actually quite a big sort of time frame, we didn't see that often, uh, two-day Bitcoin chart. And as you can see, the D TK disequilibrium is when there is just the, these big gaps uh, between the Tenkin and the Kijin. So we saw that here, this big disparity correction, similar here, but that's not as good example. This is a good one, big sort of spike and gap correction. Most recently, sorry, not most recently, this was the sort of correction to 2K. Um, you can see this is a huge area here, huge gap needed to correct, and it did. Um, similarly here, big disparity between Tenkin and Kijin we corrected. And interestingly, we're starting to form uh, a disparity or you were in TK disequilibrium now as well so if previous price action um, and patterns repeat themselves we will be obviously correcting as well okay so final remarks um, even though I did this to um, put the you know make the video easy to follow and understand you, you I do suggest you put it all together don't isolate strategies and have all your lines set up on Ichimoku and now that you know what each one does, it shouldn't be too overwhelming to have them all up at once, and I recommend you do. Just a reminder that, you know, with TK crosses and whatever else, look at where the cross is relative to the Kumo. Um, now that you know what a Kumo breakout is, um, that should make a lot more sense. And then, in general, this is just 
I suppose, broad tier advice. See if other indicators support these Ichimoku signal you're going to follow. You know, look for confluence between what the cloud's telling you and other indicators. So again, all of you will have these slides, and these, this isn't further reading. Blockchain at Berkeley calls the stock charts page. Uh, Carpe Noctum's YouTube. Chaos Trader does some cloud as well on YouTube. Um, IchimokuTrader.com, which has uh, sort of strategies and cloud signals, and a quite comprehensive Kumo Trader link as well. Okay, thank you for listening. Hopefully that was helpful, and yeah, see you next time.